Hey there, fools. Big T, and I'm back with another video. And this video is just me talking about how I believe that, uh, you know, the Switch was a huge gamble and it took big Japanese balls <laughs> to make this thing happen. We all know about the Wii U and its fate. And uh, subsequently, because of how it turned out, everybody had their theories about what Nintendo needed to do. And it wasn't just after, it was during as well. There was a lot of talk about what the Nintendo needed to do with the next console. You know, what it had to be and what it couldn't be. And so let's just go over the things that it had to be. Um, it had to be super powerful. And it had to have way better online. And it had to have uh, basically full third party support. And uh, we all know the Switch is pretty much none of those things <laughs> currently. And uh, this is one of the reasons why it's just silly when uh, you had people come out saying uh, the Switch, uh, you know, the, its success is basically their doing. We should thank them because all of the things that these guys were talking about that needed to happen didn't happen. Haven't happened on the Switch, but yet we're supposed to thank them for its success. It just doesn't make any damn sense, does it? Of course not. Um, the Switch is not super powerful. Uh, the Switch online currently still isn't quite there. And uh, it does not have full third-party support. And it probably never will because of its form factor. Uh, what it is, it is a core game con gaming console. It's focused. Uh, streamlined. It plays games beautifully. It allows you to do so uh, in your home, on the go, or anywhere in your home, which is also an advantage that most people don't really talk about. A lot of people try to downplay the Switch and why they don't really care. And, uh, and uh, not just, you know, people just trying to downplay it. Some people just don't care about uh, on-the-go gaming, which is completely fine. A lot of people just aren't, uh, you know, on-the-go gamers and whatnot. I kind of always have been. Um... You know, with, starting with the Game Boy, uh, which, which I mostly played at home. I didn't really take my Game Boy too far because my mom would have killed me. Uh, but, um, I, you know, I got acclimated to that kind of gaming early. So, uh, continuing to do that was not a big deal for me. So, I understand that some people just didn't care for gaming on the go. But, uh, a good thing about the Switch is that not only can you just take it outside the house, but it's really good inside the house, especially for people who have to share TVs. You know, if you have a family in the house, um, it's just a good thing to be able to curl up on the couch, um, still be able to interact with your kids and not be locked away in some kind of gaming man cave. <laughs> you know, so that's another cool advantage that, you know, most people don't really talk about all that much. Um, so, but, you know... It, Coming off of the Wii U, Nintendo could have made all kinds of uh, st uh, steps to completely uh, get away from what the Wii U was and do everything that the you know these so-called people who wanted credit wanted, and they didn't. And that was a gamble. It, it was a gamble to not succumb to uh, the mainstream thought process on video gaming and what video games should be basically a ps4 that's maybe that's basically <laughs> you know it's, it hasn't there wasn't a whole lot of thought process and what nintendo should be outside of just being a ps4 um you know a lot of people just didn't really they don't really think beyond that well the ps4 is popular and doing well so that's what nintendo has to do it basically copied the ps4 and uh nintendo will never copy anybody especially to that extent and um, it took, like I said, it took cojones. It took balls to, to say, no, nope, we're Nintendo. We're going to continue doing what we do. Um, we're going to bring a unique gaming console out there. A console that, uh, you know, not only plays on your TV, but you can pull it out and, you know, have these Joy-Cons slide in the side and <laughs> do this whole mobile gaming thing or on-the-go gaming thing. Um, you will have motion controls. Yeah, motion controls. Uh, something that the the Wii U really didn't have. I, I mean, I guess the the gamepad uh, had gyro in it. Uh, did it? Yeah, it did, right? I don't even remember. 
Um, yeah, it did. Obviously, it had to have uh, for Splatoon. Duh. Um, but this kind of basically went closer to the Wii than even the Wii U did. So that took balls, you know, because a lot of people were like, you know, a lot of a lot of you know gamers or uh, gaming mainstream think was you can't do that motion stuff anymore. You can't have a weak console and you know obviously the switch is not as powerful as the the hd or twins as i like to call them and they it is not um you know some online powerhouse as far as the online infrastructure i believe it'll get better um but it you know most likely won't be to the same extent of xbox one and ps4 um you know, if you just look at the price point of the yearly subscription, which is going to be, what, 20 bucks, I believe. Um, so it's not going to be as robust, I don't think. And if it is, wow, what a what a savings. But it's just uh, it's it's just cool to see Nintendo continue to be Nintendo and not be afraid. Because, um, like I said, it could have easily just decided, you know, let's go back and get into the power race and make, you know their standard console and they didn't do that and uh i say kudos kudos to them for having the balls <laughs> you know to do what they do which is something different um but something that really made an, a lot of sense really resonated with a lot of gamers and will continue to do so and uh that's just pretty cool of them so yeah like i said uh it took a lot of grit and uh, if anybody was going to do that, it was going to be Nintendo. I just think about, like, you know, other gaming companies that, you know, faltered um, in the light of uh, quote-unquote failure. Um, you have your Ataris. You have Sega, who was just kind of throwing everything at the wall, you know, reacting instead of acting, instead of uh, being proactive. They were reacting to the market. And uh, Nintendo didn't react. They didn't react to... Like I said, that groupthink belief of what gaming consoles needed to be, um, the way Sega unfortunately did, which uh, made them have the bow, ha made them have the bow out of the uh, gaming industry. So, as far as consoles go, but yeah. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, you agree or disagree? You think it was an easy thing to do? Because you know, a lot of people seem to think, oh yeah, no brainer, what Nintendo did. But I don't think so. I think it was a, a tough decision. Uh, especially in the light of Awada's Iwata, passing. Uh, they could have totally went in a whole other direction, could have scrapped the Switch, but they didn't. They believed in what it was. And uh, I'm a happy, happier gamer today because of it. So, like I said, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you as always for watching and listening, and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out.